I love a bit of theatre in the classroom. I, I, I always, always try to make the most of that whenever there is. And what better place for theatre in the chemistry classroom than explosions? Yes, the, the exploding can. Um, uh, many a, a thrills have been had with this very can. Um, this is not a product placement any can would do, but it's a Milo can today. Milo tin explosion, it's, it's a fantastic one because you can take something that looks so innocuous and uh, visually at the start of this experiment you've filled it with gas, you've got a large flame. It starts off visually the most appealing. Uh, the visual appeal drops off over time and so will interest. At the end of that visual appeal we actually get the most exciting part, the explosion. It's as simple as, it's a, it's a, any large cam would do the job. Um, I've got a hole in the bottom, uh, sized to fit a bit of rubber tubing through there, and a hole in the top. And the, the lid um, can be put on when necessary quite firm. What we're going to do is we're going to flood uh, gas from the natural gas taps um, into, the, into the bottom. And so just run a bit of tubing. Um, do not light the gas at this point. Um, you'll get a huge flame coming out of the top. Uh, whilst impressive, quite dangerous. So put the lid on. Put the lid on, have the gas, turn the gas on. It, it's suggested to put your finger on the top of the hole at the moment to try and get as much of the, the gas to build up in here as possible. And when you're ready, um, when you've done that for about 10, 15 seconds, depend, practice it because it's, it's different for every can. Uh, about 10, 15 seconds, turn the gas off, take the, the tube out, and we suggest sort of maybe sitting this maybe on a tripod or something like that to make it a bit more impressive. Um, and then light the top. As you light, as you light your flame, it, that, 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 you know, it's, it initially seems that you're doing something dangerous. You're pumping a very flammable gas from what is all intents and purposes an open gas valve, uh, running into a Milo can or coffee can, whatever you have, lighting it up and you have a nice little candle and that's, that's cool, ooh, there we go. At some point the flame starts to go slowly, slowly, slowly down. Um, and it'll drift down and drift down and it'll look like nothing's happening and nothing's happening and almost to the point where the flame becomes disappears like you can't even see it for a few seconds and students at that point go oh, oh that's a shame oh it didn't work what's going to happen is all of a sudden bang what I like to think with this is that we have a way of demonstrating that burning and explosions are very similar, they're the same reaction, but they occur under very different circumstances. Um, when we don't have enough oxygen inside the tin, we would call that, you can call that a rich atmosphere. It's the language of mechanics and, and engines uh, is that we would have too much fuel, not enough oxidant. And so in the rich atmosphere, you, you get a large flame out of the top. And you can compare this very readily to a Bunsen burner with the, uh, the air intakes closed you don't have any additional oxygen added, it can only burn well outside of the Bunsen burner. We get a large yellow flame. Different to the Bunsen burner, we, we only have a set amount of fuel. And so as this fuel reduces, it sucks air in, it mixes around inside. You, you've got to remember that a jet out the top equals a jet in through the bottom. And so this mixes around and we get a, a mixture of air and gases inside. Now, so we reach a point where um, the amount of gas uh, in here is running out dramatically, the, the air is filling up, and at some point you'll just get that perfect stoichiometric ratio for one mole of methane burning in two moles of oxygen gas. And at that point the reaction will take off quite dramatically. It's a wonderful opportunity to talk about reaction ratios. I love bringing as many things as you can back to stoichiometry, back to this idea that things are going to react in a particular ratio. Uh, my, colleagues, my colleagues tell me it's about 9.8. Um, you could do the math, you know, 21% oxygen in air and such, um, where that's why it takes quite a while. The, every can is different. The, um, for this particular can, it takes about a minute. It's quite a big hole in the bottom. Um, I've seen uh, ones where the two little holes on the side, um, and, that, and the smaller the hole, um, the longer it'll take for the air to come in. And so, um, you know, this one only takes about a minute. Um, my colleagues, uh, have a can that takes about 10 minutes so you can sort of like leave it there in the corner and and um, every now and then the students are looking over there to see the flame and 
and the flame even disappears for a good minute or so with that can before it pops. You don't need to keep tending to it, so you can talk to students about all of the things that you need to work out. You can get in there and explain things, you can be pointing at diagrams, you can be, uh, you can be dealing with behaviours if you need to, um, and, and that reaction can then just go off at that time in the future. It's a good way to time tests and things as well, I've found. Uh, a tin can be calibrated to approximately four minutes, so you can time an exam question to four minutes and have that tin going. It's, it's burning down, it's burning down, it's burning down, nothing happening, they're all walking away. Bang! That, okay, made, yeah, that, was... that made the microphone clip. <laughs> <laughs>